Hi, everybody. Kevin Lonquist, publisher of Sikkim Sports, and we continue our tour of Baylor's uh, 2019 team, the members of that team that have had their opportunity to join the NFL. And now we're joined by linebacker Jordan Williams, who recently has signed his free agent deal with the Atlanta Falcons out of the NFC South Conference. And first of all, Jordan, uh, Paris's own uh, Jordan Williams. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, uh, Jordan, and uh, we're happy for you. What's that, what's that, what was that feeling like for you to sign with the Falcons uh, and, and uh, start an NFL career? Oh, man, it was, it was just, you know, all I wanted was opportunity. And, you know, that, the opportunity presented itself, and I couldn't turn it down. I couldn't, I couldn't find any fault in it. And so, you know, I was very excited. I, I still am. You know, I'm ready to get to work now. You know, all the fun is over with. Now it's like you're just coming back into college again from high school. And if you're uh, wondering what those pictures are over his uh, right shoulder, those are actually his <laughs> works of art. We'll get to that in just <laughs> a little bit here. But, uh, Jordan, let's take us through the, pro the process uh, here of, uh, you know, because you knew that you were going to be a free agent signing, and maybe that was up in the air whether or not that was going to happen or not. But as you were – once the season ended in the Sugar Bowl against Georgia – to where you were preparing yourself for hopefully this opportunity that did work out with the Falcons. Uh, what were you doing to prepare yourself and what was it like the last week leading up to uh, draft weekend to where you ultimately did get this opportunity with Atlanta? Oh man, uh, you know, when the game ended in New Orleans, you know, we, we, we all got our minds right because we knew in three months it was, it was make or break time. And you know, we kind of, as a group, we talked about it, you know, we talked a lot. And, you know, we always said, that, you know, that Coach Rule gave us all the tools to take it to the next level. He taught us how to be pros, regardless of what what, stats, what status you had or, you know, if you're a walk-on, a Hall of Famer, All-American, anything like that, you were going to act like a pro. And, you know, he implemented all that. And so we take that and we just take it and just put it on to the NFL teams. And they honestly, they honestly notice it. And, you know, with the whole virus and stuff going on, a lot of teams were able to, you know, watch film and see things like that. And that's how I was blessed with my opportunity because they were able to watch my film a lot. And, you know, we didn't get to do Pro Day, which was going to be big for a lot of us, you know, to get it, um, get our names out there and stuff like that. But, you know, we trained, we trained for the last three months, you know, prior to the draft. And we really got in great condition. I seen James Lynch and I was, he looked like a different human being. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, we, we just busted our butts, man, because we knew that, you know, our film, we played. I mean, 10 out of 11 players on defense, that's, that's, that's crazy. You yeah. know, we played hard. I, I had a tweet, uh, you know, because I had to include Clay in this, but uh, it was that, that game against Texas Tech uh, on October 12th. I think it was nine of the 11 guys from that starting unit uh, have an opportunity. Of course, you were one of those. And so um, – but I want to – take you through what you said about Matt Rule making you guys pros even beyond what you did on the field define that for all of us what that meant to you uh and how he and what he instilled in you about that I mean they they told us from day one even when we won one game throughout the whole season that was awful but he told us from you know day one that we were going to go out there and we were going to compete and we we're going to, you know, you know those feel. We're going to compete. We're going to go hard. We're going to play, you know, at the highest level. And so, you know, he would take it further than that. We wouldn't, we weren't able to wear hats, hoodies, uh, anything inside the building. We would have, you know, the jug really didn't mean anything, but it meant a lot. You know what I mean? Like if you carry your jug around and you're disciplined enough to carry that heavy jug around all day, and you're disciplined enough to, you know, on third down, don't jump off sides and give them a first down. You know what I mean? And he always taught us to be on time. If you were late to anything, regardless of who you were, you had punishment. He taught us, you know, things just, I don't know, it was just little things just all over the place, little less life lessons that he dropped on us that, you know, it really changed us, you know, as human beings outside of being football players. So let's take it. So take me through, you know, because the fact that it, and I want to know, because Baylor's pro day was going to be in uh, late March. I think it was the 24th. And obviously, when that got shut down, how how devastating was that for you? Or did you just say, okay, then I've got to figure out another way to get my name out there by doing X, Y, and Z? Um, you know, I, I trained hard for it. And, you know, I, I wanted to, you know, show, what I, show how hard I've been working, you know. And 
obviously that would have been a big boost for me. Um, but, you know, I look at it more of I'm a football player. I'm not a numbers guy. So me, it kind of helped me. It kind of allowed them to be able to watch the film and see what type of player I am outside of just seeing the attributes of, you know, pro day, which, you know, I worked hard for it. You know, I was going to give great numbers and stuff like that, hopefully. And, but at the end of the day, it was a big blessing for me that they were able to just watch film and actually see that I'm a football player outside of, you know, the attributes and the, the things that they checked off at pro day. So let's talk a little bit about as far as like the last two weeks leading up to draft weekend. Again, you knew that you weren't going to get picked, but you had to hope for that phone call late Saturday afternoon for something to happen. So what teams were you in communication with? And then when it came down to crunch time before it became the Falcons, who were you talking with and why the Falcons for you? Um, I mean, I, I talked to a few teams before the draft, you know, just leading up to that week, a lot of teams called just to, uh, get a rapport, you know, have their number and stuff like that. But when I talked to the Falcons, they called me like two weeks before. And, you know, he, he was telling me how much he, you know, he, he admired my film. And to me, uh, somebody believing in me, honestly, that's, that's the biggest thing for me. And, you know, they believed in me. He, he told me, you know, I was talking to Aiden Duternay, or Aiden Dirty. I'm sorry, I mess his name up all the time, but they call him AD. And uh, I was talking to him, which is a defensive assistant linebacker coach. And um, he was telling me, you know, that he liked my film and stuff like that. And I talked to the linebacker coach and I started talking to more guys, uh, you know, affiliated with the organization and, you know, just how they sounded and just how we talked. It was just a culture I wanted to be a part of. And at the end of the day, I just wanted somebody to believe in me. And so they believed in me. So that was my first gun, first jump. And, you know, even through the draft, I was texting uh, my, my linebacker coach, Coach Obrich, and I was telling him, you know, regardless of the draft, regardless of what happens, I want to come to Atlanta. Just because I knew I could thrive there and they believed in me and they wanted to de de uh, develop me. And so, you know, I had to jump on it. Sure. So let's talk a little bit about, because I've, you know, we've talked to Clay Johnson, we've talked to Ross, we've talked to Tech about, obviously this is a little bit different. You would be on a plane to Atlanta right now trying to get down there for mini camp or for rookie camp. That's not going to happen. So mm -hmm. a lot of the guys have told us, or those guys have told us that, these virtual camps are going to start, you know, maybe in a week's time or something like that. So what's been the message from the Falcons to you about what to expect over the next few days? Um, they're, they're currently sending the iPad through and we're going to start meetings uh, through Microsoft Teams. And we'll start meeting with uh, uh, separately, you know, rookies will meet with a developmental program and then, you know, the older guys will meet. But um, we're supposed to start those next week and the iPad should be here this week. Okay. Is there anything that you, that they want, like any workout regimen that they want you to go through that they've given you at this point, or are you still kind of doing it on your own at this point? Uh, right now I am, but they put, uh, I can't remember what he called it, but he put something on the iPad and he wanted me to do it every day. So whenever okay. that gets, that's when I'll start that. Okay. So now we have uh, Baylor's version of uh, Michael Angelo uh, sitting there. <laughs> And so those pictures, again, I mentioned them a few moments ago, those pictures over his yeah. right shoulder. So, Jordan, I'm going to ask you to get up and take us over there to these pictures. These are all of his drawings uh, or paintings, if you will. These are his. And so if you didn't know this about Jordan Williams and, and uh, his uh, talent uh, beyond the football field as an outside linebacker for Baylor's defense, he's going to show you the, the, the precision of the work. Are you ready to show this to, to everyone, Jordan? Yes, sir. I just don't. I wanted to make it uh, clear that I've only had one art class throughout. That's my okay. Whole... <laughs> well, if you only had one art class, for those of us like me who can't even draw a straight line, you're already far <laughs> ahead of the curve on that. And so, appreciate it. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, so, so I'm these not... are your. So these are all your um, art collections. If you'll just raise it, there you go. Um, yes, sir. So, so take us through all these drawings, who they are, uh, like that picture there, right there, of the uh, five gentlemen there, and that. So take us through who those are and uh, what that what that represents to you. Yes, sir. I mean, I got bored one day and I wanted to draw celebrities, rappers. Uh, this one's supposed to be Meek Mill. This one's supposed to be Kevin Gates, Gucci Mane, Drake, and Quavo. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm proud of these four. I'm kind of mad about that one, but I'm proud of these four. Okay, and then uh, I guess if you'll just move it up, of course, everyone knows who that is. That's Iron Man on the left and Spider-Man on the right. So uh, 
Uh, I'm assuming you're a big fan of the uh, of those comics, and you've seen all the movies uh, when they were out on screen, that sort of thing. Absolutely, my girlfriend's a huge fan, so <laughs> she put me on. All right, gotcha. And then just moving over there to the other side there, okay. And so, then now I'm a little bit lost on this one, so you're gonna have to take. Gotcha. This uh, I have, I actually drew this for a, a old teammate, and uh, he int- it, uh, he actually ended up leaving. So I I just finished it and hung it up on my wall. But it's supposed to be Goku and someone else's anime. Okay, gotcha. Is there any others, or did I miss one there? Or is one at the top? Oh yeah, it's one up top. That's like a spray can with my name and graffiti on it. Gotcha. Okay, on that. All right. And so, and you said you only took one art class, but there had to be. But you had to have been doing this for. <laughs> quite some time um, hey. before you actually took a formalized art class to kind of, you know, round your uh, talents into shape. Is that fair or is it something that came naturally to you? Uh, naturally, I just, I, I, I honestly just looked at things and I like, I don't know, I like doodling and I finally I just started getting really good at it. I started watching YouTube videos a lot. You know, I just kind of, I took one art class like two semesters ago before I graduated and um or before I was done with my eligibility, and that class honestly helped me a lot. So yeah, okay, is that something you think that you'd like to pursue? Uh, you know, whatever happens with this opportunity with the Falcons, obviously you want to make the most out of that. But is this mm-hmm. something you want to kind of look into? Because you you look like you've got a pretty good foundation going for yourself. I appreciate it, uh, but you know, I, I think it's more of a hobby for me. It's something to take my mind away from things, and you know, I, I kind of want to get into this bit into the business world afterwards. Okay. So, okay. So let me ask you this. What kind of piece or what kind of distressing agent, I guess, if you want to call it that, what does that do for you when you're, when you're on, when you're on the canvas and Mm -hmm. you're seeing things come to mind and you're just kind of get, you kind of get into that zone doing that sort of thing? Oh man, I I just kind of, you know, I turn on my music and I just kind of zone out. I kind of forget about what's going on. I've kind of forget about that. I got to get up and work out the next morning. Uh, You know, (laughs) I kind of forget, you know, just everything. And I just go into my own my own space and I look up and I've been drawing for like two and a half hours. How, how, how serious have you been doing this? How many years have you been doing this, do you think? Uh, about probably my whole life. I, I started getting really good more around, you know, high school. And I started getting really good here because, you know, I have nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Gotcha. Well, Jordan, it's a, it's a great feeling for you. We're really happy and excited for you that this opportunity with the Atlanta Falcons uh, came to fruition. We wish you nothing but the best of luck uh, once you get started with the rookie camps and the virtual meetings and things like that. Thanks for being with us. Uh, yes, sir. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking uh-huh. through my artwork. <laughs> All right, there you go. I know about right. that. <laughs> All right. If you have a line where you might want to have something drawn from, let me know and I can get a hold of him and then maybe I can put you together and then bing, bada bing, bada boom, there you go. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right, Jordan Williams, folks. I'm Kevin Longquist from Sigma Sports. We'll talk to you next time and thanks for being with us.